What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. So guys, I've been sitting here in the mushroom that we built last episode with it being so big and empty, trying to figure out how we are going to fill this up with something and make it look good. Yeah, that's a problem that I'm struggling with and I've come up with some ideas and I think we have a plan but it's just kind of like mm, placing that first block. Oh no. What if I do it wrong? What if I turn? What if it turns out I don't like it? You know, those kinds of things. So I've been sitting here for just a little while now, just kind of looking at the mushroom, being like, you yeah, know, I think we got to get something figured out. But er before we get into that, earlier this week, uh, on Monday, we had a, her a, her a hermit helping hermits. That's a tongue twister sometimes. Uh, yeah, so we. Like a lot of us uh, went over to I Jevon's base, well, where his uh, his base is going to be, and we helped him dig out a big, big hole. I think we got down about 20 layers or something like that. I didn't actually count, but it's quite a lot. Anyway, let's jump into some of that footage, and then we will come right back here and look at building something in our giant mushroom. Just to, to oh, give dear. instructions one more time. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so there's extra right extra pickaxes and chakra boxes to store items while you're mining. Please use soak touch if you do use your own items. Um, if you want to sort items into the chests over here, there's a sorter. Please don't overflow it. You can s sort everything or just dump everything into these chests right here. That's perfectly fine. I'll sort it later. Otherwise, we're going down to bedrock. Sweet. Oh. So, diggy yeah, diggy time. Just, yeah. I, I, have, you, I have one question, Jeff. Am I allowed to keep okay. any ores that we find or anything like uh, that? Yeah, you, the ores, they're, you're perfectly fine to keep them. So, Sweet. I don't want hang any on, of them. Hang on, hang on. You know, they're, gotta... they're selling out over at the Evil Emporium. Cough, cough. Take, <laughs> take one of quick, these. Nudge, take... nudge, up coin. What? Take, take, Ooh, one, take one each. Dude, <laughs> what, did you do? what did you do to my family? <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, I, need, uh, I need to join the cult. Did I'm actually out. I'm actually out of heads, so uh, listen. I, I don't have to need go one. That one so. oh, dang it. Yeah, I don't need I'm one. There you go. <laughs> because there was like three in the Nether at your slime thing. Did you take those two? Yeah. Oh, I should go get those. Yeah. Yeah. We need. We need. I need one. Yep. All right. I'm ready when you guys are. <laughs> it's of the most importance that we have yes, slime heads on the slime when we clubs. Dig. Yeah, let me what level are we digging down to? Bedrock. Uh, bedrock. bedrock. Oh, okay. I can do that. I can do that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, here we go. Everybody in my chat is is, te is is doing like Ohio jokes at this point. Oh God! Oh, who wants to see the Hell Cave? It's here. It's real. Out. Over here. Oh, I, I heard see them. See the apocalypse. Okay. Yay! Murder. Oh, oh my! Oh my God! I don't know. Oh, don't kill them. <laughs> They'll take care of themselves. There we go.
So yeah, we were there digging over at Ijevan's base for probably around two hours. We made some pretty good progress with all the hermits that were there. I think there was like six of us. I didn't actually count how many, but there was quite a few. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We live streamed it. So if you didn't check that on our live streams, you can head over to twitch.tv slash hypnotize and you can check out my previous broadcasts on that. Um, anyway, so as far as putting something into this mushroom here, I think what I want to do is I would like to put in a platform over on this side, the side meaning like this side of the stem over here. So we'll have like pretty big platform, I think. And then the way this is going to work is we will kind of like taper the, the platform. So it kind of like fits around the stem. So this side is kind of narrow. And on the other side of the mushroom stem over here is a rather large. So we'll have like more area to work. But also you can see how we kind of like slope down over here. So I think instead of like having a flat platform right there, uh, I think we'll actually have like a lower platform down here. Have like some stairs coming down, give some height difference, make it a little bit more interesting in the mushroom. So I think what we're going to use as far as blocks go, uh, I think we're going to use like a spruce, like a stripped spruce log. Oh, it's nighttime out here. Very dangerous. Yeah, a stripped spruce log. And I have already uh, grabbed some spruce logs uh, for the border. And then for the inside of the blocks, that's something else that we're going to have to figure out. We're going to have to worry about lighting. We're going to have to worry about, uh, you know, what we're making the floor out of. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to have to figure out. So I think for lights, I think for lights, I'm going to go with shroom lights underneath the floor, probably with leaves on top. We'll be going for some kind of a nature-y theme inside the mushroom. Uh, thing is, though, I don't have any shroom lights, so, oh my goodness, what's going on over here? Joe and Cleo have been busy. They are doing some stuff. Couldn't tell you what that is, but it looks pretty amazing, and we have a nice view of it from right here. Uh, yeah, so I think shroom lights are what we're going to go for. I don't have any. Uh, I think I need to go, whoop, <laughs> I think I need to go to the nether and collect some shroom lights. Well, we could grow some of the uh, the mushrooms here at the base and chop them down and stuff, or I could just go to the nether, <laughs> out to random places, and just collect them that are already existing. I think that's what I'm going to do. And about 45 minutes later, I now have three stacks of shroom lights. That should get us by for now. We're about to build maybe a little bit more than what we need, but yeah, that's good. I uh, also started cutting down a bunch of the warped... Wood, is that what that is? I can't remember what this stuff is called. I didn't have any of it. Yeah, warp stem and the warped wart block. I didn't have any of this stuff. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it. But yeah, I was spending time like chopping down the entire mushroom trees or whatever, the warped trees in the nether to get these shroom lights. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and fly around and find uh, the shroom lights and just get those by themselves. So yeah, I ended up uh, using a bit of durability on my, nether, on my netherite hoe there. Uh, so yeah, I think we're about ready to get started. Having these hoes though, <laughs> never would have thought that a hoe would be like super useful for pretty much daily use in the game. But yeah, ever since, uh, 116 or whatever, uh, those have been really helpful for like breaking leaves and the, uh, the mushroom blocks and all that sort of stuff. Man, these shroom lights though, these remind me, these are probably my favorite sound in the game. Just that sound, it sounds like tapping on a hollow drum or something like that. I don't know. It just is like, just a really satisfying sound. I wish it was a little bit louder than the block breaking sound, but you know, whatever. Anyway, uh, now that we have these blocks, I can go ahead and take these and start utilizing them inside the base here. Start laying out like the framework for our floor, and then we can see what that's going to look like. All right, so after placing blocks for a little while, we got ourselves a nice spruce border around where I think our platform's gonna be, and the inside of the platform is obviously just dirt at the moment, with some shroom lights kind of sprinkled in there. Yeah, I think, I think the shape of the platform is about where we want it to be, and then down here we have a lower platform. Yeah, like I said, I wanted some height difference because the shape of our mushroom kind of slopes down over this way, and we could have just had a platform that goes straight across, but I don't feel like that's going to be super interesting to look at. So yeah, I think having different levels here is what we want to go for. 
Uh, so I'm thinking we'll probably get some stairs that connect the two, obviously, so we can walk up and down them and don't have to fly. Um, and then as far as our stem and coming up and down, I want to get rid of the scaffolding. I feel like we're going to end up doing maybe a spiral staircase that would come up here and then somehow connect to this platform. Then you'd walk around this way to go up to this platform. Then maybe over here we'll have stairs that go up to like another platform. We'll just keep kind of doing that all the way around. I think that would end up looking pretty cool. But those other platforms I just talked about are a little bit out of the scope for today. What I want to do is actually do something with this and make this look cool. Uh, so right now it's just dirt. Like I said, it's not going to stay dirt, but we needed blocks in here so we could start doing some magic. All right. And if you didn't guess what the magic is, we are going to moss block. Mm hmm. So moss block there. Let's get some bone meal, bone meal that boom, instant foliage instantly looks better. Let's get rid of that. And then we will continue to spread this around like a so. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple of things about this that we're going to have to come back through and fix. One of those things is going to be the amount of these azalea bushes. Uh, yeah, those have to be thinned out. Like you get quite a lot of them and that's cool, but that's too much. I don't really want that much stuff going on around here. Uh, so yeah, we'll go through here. Like I said, we're going to spread the moss around, convert our dirt into moss, which is going to be fantastic looking. It's almost like grass, but better, right? You don't have to worry about the biome changes or different colorations. That's one of the things that have always bothered me about grass in Minecraft. I love the fact that there are differences in the coloration uh, based on which biome you are in. But at the same time, I also don't like that because most of the time I like building large builds and in those builds, the uh, biomes change, whether that be a river or just other biome changes. And when that happens and you're building with grass, oh, it's such a bummer because like you have the grass looking one way and then all of a sudden it starts turning into a different color and you're like, well, that's not what I wanted. Well, with the moss, yeah, you have the same consistent color all around, which is great. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Like I said. Uh, the shroom lights that I have over here, we are not going to leave those exposed. Those are going to get covered up with moss. So you won't even know they're there, but everything's going to be well lit, which is going to be fantastic. Uh, we might even do some other variations with light around here. Maybe take some of the, um, the end rod mushrooms, the mini mushrooms that we've placed around and have those kind of here and there for decoration. So that would be kind of cool. Another thing we could do is lower... Uh, the shroom lights by one and maybe put some azalea leaves on top of them. So they give us like a difference in the terrain, things like that. That's another possibility that we could do. So that might be something that we look at. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish bone mealing this, thinning out a lot of the azalea bushes that we're getting, definitely getting rid of the too high grass and probably thinning out a lot of the tall grass because there is quite a lot of that. And I don't necessarily want that much, but anyway, let me go ahead, finish this up, and we'll be back, guys. All right, so we are just about finishing up here on the platforms. I'm just going through, as you can see, and holding down right-click and stripping the spruce logs of their bark, and that should be the last one. Okay, so yes, you can see that I got rid of all the azalea bushes, the, uh, the flowering azalea, the regular azalea, all the double tall grass, and most of the single tall grass. I left some around the edges, I tried to keep it so there wasn't a whole lot there, just so it kind of looks a little overgrown in the places that you probably aren't normally going to be walking. Uh, so yeah, that's what we ended up with here. And then I did put in a staircase that goes between this platform and the upper platform, which is really nice. I like it. Uh, so I said earlier that I like the moss because it doesn't matter what biome you are in. It's always the same color. It doesn't change color. Well, turns out, I'm, I'm still right, but you can see this is one color and that right there is a completely different color. Yes, this is a plains grass and this is a dark forest grass. So yeah, we still got a little bit of biome variation in the colors. I guess I could get rid of the, uh, the little patches of tall grass all together. Then we wouldn't have that there, but I kind of want to have like some things around here. And I'm not sure if this is the final layout because I do think 
that I'll probably add in some patches of dirt that kind of go along where, we, where the normal path is going to be so it looks a little worn down. And we'll change that dirt into path blocks. Just kind of like sprinkle it in a little bit. I think that'll make it look pretty good. Um, so this platform here, I'm thinking we are going to put in storage. I think this is going to be our main storage platform. I've mulled over different ideas what we could do for storage here. And like normally I'd put like the double chest stacked on top of each other and do like a big rectangle looking thing with the item frames on it. Not sure we're going to do that this season, or at least in this base. I'm thinking we're going to use barrels, right? So we'll have barrels kind of like in the diagonals here in both of these corners. I don't know how we're going to label them. Maybe it's just going to be like blocks on one side and other things on the other side. And then I'll just kind of remember where things go. Uh, that's a possibility, but I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Now, as far as what goes in the center between barrels on both sides, well, I mean, we do have this white spot on our mushroom. It was suggested that we could remove the white concrete and the white wool and swap that out with powdered snow, and then we could fly in and out of the base. So that seems pretty cool, because I was talking about before that I wanted to open up like a little thing so we could fly in and out, but if we could repurpose one of the white spots to be powdered snow, and that would allow us to get in out of the base, I think that would be pretty awesome. So that might be something that we look into at some point in the future. But before we go much further with this and like doing storage and all these other things that I'm talking about, there's a problem that I'm seeing here. So as we're walking around the base, this is all cool. We got a nice, nice platforms to walk on, but like we're seeing underneath like the behind the scenes area. I'm not really liking that. Um, so I took some of the azalea bushes that we got from making all this moss and I was growing the azalea trees. I also collected some of the uh, rooted dirt that you get when you grow those. Apparently when you grow the azaleas on moss, it changes the moss block to a rooted dirt as well. I didn't know that. Well, anyway, uh, we have some rooted dirt because I grabbed some of that and then I was just messing around. You can get hanging roots by uh, using a hoe on that, I think. I can't remember how I did that. I think that's what I did. Anyway, what I want to do is take some of these flowering azalea and regular azalea leaves and kind of do a thing underneath the platforms here. So let's just do a little example on this side. So I'll just take some of these regular leaves. I'll probably sprinkle in the flowering ones a little bit later. But yeah, what I'm thinking is like underneath the moss, we can kind of, well, I guess I don't have to be holy shit. We can kind of just do some of this stuff and just kind of like close this off a bit. Now this is going to look, hmm, I'm not sure how this is going to look. Uh, it's going to look a little not organic, I guess is what I'm going for. I don't know the proper terminology to say that, so I was struggling for the word. Uh, but yeah, this is going to look a little weird. But anyway, I think that's what we're going to do. They're going to be like hanging leaves underneath the platforms. That way I'll give the platform. Looks like it's actually got a little bit of structure, even though these are leaves. Let's be honest, they can't really support much if this was real life but this isn't this is minecraft so we're going to be doing this placing these down here like so and then all along the red mushroom stuff down here i think we're going to place leaves this is going to do a couple of things for us one it's going to make it so it's not so red uh, underneath our platforms right we're going to see a lot of greenery Two, it's going to make it so I don't have to actually have torches everywhere because nothing can spawn on the leaves, right? So if there's leaf blocks all over like the bottom down here, we won't have to worry about things spawning down there and it'll look a lot more green and lush, which I think is going to be pretty awesome. Although the only problem is it's going to require a stupid amount of leaves, <laughs> but I'm prepared. I think I can handle it. Uh, just a bunch of tree growing and then using our shears or whatever, uh, our, um, our hoe our silk touch hoe to uh, get the leaves. I'm prepared to do that. But yeah, I think this is gonna end up looking pretty cool. We'll just do this. And then as another layer to add some variety to this, we can also uh, put some vines along the outside of here. So we'll have vines dripping down like in the front. And then behind that, we'll have like these leaves kind of blocking the rest of the view. And I think that's gonna look pretty cool. Well, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do a bunch of this here. and then We'll be back guys. All right, so I made a few more changes around here. We got those vines put in, like I said that I was thinking we should do. Yep, just grew a uh, jungle tree, a large one, 
use shears, grab the vines, and just kind of spread them around. And since I spread the vines around, it kind of turned into a vine farm, so I was able to get the rest that I needed to go all the way around these platforms. So both this lower platform and the upper platform have the vines along the outside. And once those grow, it'll give like a little bit more depth to the leaf action that we have going underneath these platforms here. Uh, I did add in a bunch of leaves down below. In fact, I used all the azalea leaves that I had <laughs> doing this. So yeah, you can see I don't have enough leaves to cover everything like I'd like to do, but we got a good portion of it done over here at least. Yeah, there's still like a lot of space over on this side that would need to be covered if we get to that point where I cover everything. But yeah, that's where we are right now on that. So you might have saw that I have some glowberry vines here. I was kind of thinking, uh, we were talking about the leaves, how they were holding the platform up or whatever. Maybe it'd be kind of cool to have the platforms hanging from vines, right? Like these glowberry vines. I thought that might look kind of cool, although they don't really attach to these in any particular way. And I'm not really sure a good way to make it look like they would attach. Um, we could also do something like chains, which would make sense, but I don't really want to do like metallic stuff, metal things in here. I feel like this is probably gonna be better off being more nature -y. So no stone, no metal, things along those lines. We could use like wood fence posts, I guess, would be another option. But yeah, I thought we'd go with the vines for now. So it looked like everything was just suspended off of those. So yeah, I'm kind of liking the way this is looking right now, but I'm definitely open to some feedback on what you guys think that we should do or we can change or whatever. Now, eventually, if we add in like another upper level here, we could have the upper level suspended by the vines and then the lower level suspended by the upper level from vines. That might look pretty cool as well. But yeah, uh, still need to put in a few more vines over on this platform over here. Kind of ran out of bone meal, so I stopped doing what we were doing. And I wasn't sure if we were going to keep this or not. But yeah, the lower one, you can definitely see what we got going on here. Where those vines go. All right. So now that we've gotten a whole bunch of base stuff done today, I think it's time that we take a break away from this. And let's finally go after the tag. All right, guys, so here we are over at Bodum, and the last time we were here, there was a lot less stuff in this area, my goodness. Yeah, the last time we were here, I believe, was to sign up for Tag, and that was a long time ago. If memory serves me correctly, I believe Impulse is the one that has it. Oh my goodness, Impulse, what have you been doing with their base? Wow. Wow, 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 this thing... This thing is massive. <laughs> you know, also, I guess it is possible that the tag could be at his starter base and not his mega base. Uh, maybe we'll give that a look. I do believe that was just like right out in front, wasn't it? So it could also be here. It could be around the outside. Well, oh, there's balconies and stuff too. Interesting. Just give it a quick peek around here. Could be at the bottom of this well. All right, well, let's go in. We uh, looked around the outside. Thing up here, it's pretty tight quarters. Doesn't seem like there could be a lot of sneaky hiding places here. Maybe down on the main level. We got here, not seeing too many things. Just a cozy little starter base, it looks like. Oh, there's stairs that goes down. All right, let's see what's down here then. These just look like farms and stuff. Oh, wait, what's back here? Mm, not sure what this is. I'm sure it has some purpose. Looks like a place to get the two tall flowers. Right. Well, actually, what is all this? We got some crying obsidian. Right. Interesting. And down this way. Oh. Okay. Ah, congrats. You found the tag, sort of. In order to retrieve the tag, you will first need to correctly answer five questions. Oh, and to play, it's going to cost you. Place one diamond in the chest to the left to reveal the questions. Next page. But hurry up because you only get one minute to answer all five questions. 
If you run out of time before getting all five correct, feel free to deposit another diamond <laughs> for another go at it. Sure, no problem. I'll just give you all my diamonds. Uh, once you get all five correct, five questions, the tag will drop onto the torch to the left. Good luck. I'm guessing here. Oh, is that the tag right there? Aha! I'm sure I'm going to use the first diamond to figure out what the questions are and then probably write them down. Hmm. I guess it depends on how difficult they are. Okay. What is all of this? Start at the very end down here. Season seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. Question one. In which season did Impulse get addicted to eating amethyst shards? Uh, that would have to be this season because I don't think amethyst shards were in any other season before this one, right? So I'm going to go with season eight. In which season did Impulse and Tango open a mob catching business name Derp? I'm going to go with season six. Oh, let's try that one. Uh, which season did Impulse and Azuma hang a ghast from the ceiling of the nether? I actually don't know this one. So we'll skip. Okay. <laughs> I, I should have gone through, like I said, and just read the questions first. Okay, let's put in another diamond here. Uh, which season did Impulse blow up the top half of his base? I don't know. Which did Impulse get pranked with a giant bird on top of his base? Hmm. Well, I didn't get it, so I need to go... Look up some answers, I guess. All right, so I went back through the different questions. I wrote them down and I did some research on Impulse's channel, trying to figure out what it was that I was missing because I'm obviously missing something here. Um, so the Amethyst Shards is definitely season eight. Uh, I had to figure out when Impulse and Tango started a mob service called Derp because I know that they've been doing Derp for a while now. Turns out they, uh, they started that in season four. Aha. Uh -huh. That was during one of the seasons where I was not on the vanilla server. So I didn't know for sure. Season three was when impulse and Azuma actually hung a ghast from the nether hub. Yeah. I found that in his playlists and then, uh, which season did impulse blow up the top half of his base? Yeah. Season seven. So the last question is which did impulse get pranked with giant birds? on top of his base. And that's the one I don't know. I couldn't find it. I've looked through all the different uh, playlists that he had. Um, so I think we're gonna try and brute force that last one. I'm gonna make sure all of these are set correctly. So we need eight, four, three, seven, eight. This one was way wrong. Four, three. This should be the ghast one. Yeah, so this should be three. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. So this one's season seven, and then this last one, season five. Oh, I already had it on season five. Well, that was lucky. I think that was when I was just trying to brute force. All right, so the next generation <laughs> dragon egg, we got it. Yes, we finally have the tag. All right, so we need to figure out what day it is, and this is... It says it in here somewhere. <laughs> Aha, I found it. Okay, right here. Local difficulty, and this is day. So we found it on day 6882. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Hermitcraft. We finally got our hands on the tag, which is super awesome. And we got ourselves a bunch of base building done today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually putting in some chests and getting storage set up and all that kind of stuff. So we can finally get ourselves a little bit organized around here. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.